Hi, welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. Well, the weather is kind of gray here in the Netherlands and um, I am actually also working in gray tones today because I'll be using India ink. I have been using it a few times lately and I really like uh, the effect of India ink because you can get so many gray tones but you can also get the very dark, dark black. And I love that. So um, I will show you how I make um, a self-portrait using India ink. I am using India ink, a dip pen, a watercolor brush, or you can use any kind of brush really, water, a saucer or some place where you can mix, and it's really handy to have a cloth or some paper towel or something like that. Let's begin. Okay, so with my reference picture, I am starting with actually a continuous line drawing, just because that makes me get over the fear of the first lines. But after that, I will just go from one place to the other. I'm trying not to draw too many lines. So for example, I'm not drawing the bridge of my nose, but just the nostrils. And then later on, with my brush and my diluted ink, I can add more detail or depth. I'm just trying to capture a little bit of the proportions, but, you know, it's all fine. It's just about drawing a portrait or drawing anything, really. You don't need to do a self-portrait or draw a face if you want to try out or play with India ink, you can, of course, draw anything you like. There are no rules. I drew myself a little bit um, cross-eyed. I think it's fine. I don't want to um, correct too much because then I will have these hard lines that will only confirm the or actually put more attention on the places where I made a little mistake. So I'm just leaving as is. Where it's, you know, where I go wrong, it's fine. Uh, also, oh man, I have a lot of wrinkles around that mouth. Anyway, I will draw them and hopefully it won't turn out into a moustache. Now that I have all the lines that I want, I will put my pen away and I'm picking up some water and I will mix that with some of the black ink. I need a little bit more water, I think, because otherwise my first layer will be super dark and um, that will scare me. So here we go, um, mid-tone gray, I think this is. And mind you, it dries up a little bit lighter. So if you're like, this is too much, that's okay. It will dry up a little bit lighter. But even if it's too much, it's too much. That's fine too, and you can work with it because what we'll be doing is layering, just like you would glaze with watercolors. So this is my first layer that I'm putting down. Then once it's dried, I can add another layer, maybe a darker one or lighter. I'll just go with the flow, see what it needs. Right now it looks kind of ridiculous with these strange gray lines, but I am going to just trust the process and I'm going to trust myself, try to feel confident that I will bring this to a good end. Then again, it doesn't really matter what the end result will be because I'm just really happy playing with ink. You might need to change your water in between because your brush will pick up a lot of ink and if you clean it in the water, the water will get gray too. So if you want fresh water, just go for it. Okay, so now I am mixing a little bit of a lighter tone of gray so I can um, add more shading without it being too hard. And as you can see, the gray that I have already put on there is just staying there. It's not being diluted again, it's just waterproof. Careful though, if you're looking for waterproof ink for your fountain pen, do not use India ink because it will clog and destroy your pen. Only use this with dip pen and brushes. While I wait for this layer to dry, I am adding some darks in places where I don't have any wet ink right now. My sweater, my eyes, nostrils, 
Here and there it will bleed because I'm too impatient, but I don't really mind because I like the blooming effect. You can also sometimes see that in watercolor, that it blooms because you add more water or you uh, combine two colors and they bloom into each other. Those effects can be really wonderful. And sometimes you also need to just let go of wanting to control everything. It can be really great to be surprised by the material. I've added a very dark tone now for the eyebrow and you can see that blooming. I don't like how it blooms down to my eyelid. So I am drying my brush and then pick up the excess of ink and then it's actually fine. I let that dry and I'll see how that turns out. Now I'm just adding bits and pieces, looking at my reference photo to see where the shadows are. And actually the shadows aren't that hard in this photo. So it's not the best photo to use maybe as a reference, but it's fine. I can still see if I squeeze my eyes, I can st still see darks and lighter bits. I think the hair needs some real dark tones to also even out the dark tone of my sweater. I think that will bring a little bit more balance to it. And um, the dark of the eyes is good too because they sort of pop out that way. I also like to frame it in a way. So I'll add a bit of a background, but I, I won't frame it all the way, just part of it, making sort of a frame behind my face. And I'm actually doing that to practice how to make a flat wash. The hair needs just a little layer too. And now that I've added that dark background, I think I need to add just a few darker tones here and there where the shadows are. And then I'm done. Well, whether there's likeness or not, doesn't really matter. It's not about the self-portrait, but it's about the process and the fun with ink. And I sure had fun. I hope you will try this too. And um, well, that you will have as much fun or maybe even more. See you soon. Bye.